Hi, in this set of demo videos, I'm going to show you how to get started with uh, an editor called Komodo Edit. Komodo Edit is a script and code editor that is free. There is a non-free version that is called Komodo IDE, and I'm highlighting that on the screen. So make sure that when you download Komodo, you're not downloading the IDE version. Instead, you need to make sure that you're downloading the Komodo Edit version. Okay, so if you go to this website, uh, the Active State website, it's activestate.com slash Komodo dash edit slash downloads, and that's going to also be available from uh, the Blackboard link, then you will be prompted as to whether or not you're on a Windows or a Mac platform to download the appropriate uh, software. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you to download this and install it on your computer. I've already got it on my computer. If you really don't want to install this because you're used to using some other code editor or you have Dreamweaver, let's say, and you would like to use that instead of this other free editor, that's fine with me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize that window. And once you get Komodo installed, uh, you can go ahead and open it up and your screen will look something like this. Uh, I, did, I did double check and this version, which if you want to check it out, you can go to About Komodo, is version um, 853. This version on a Mac looks identical to the version on Windows. So if you have a Windows computer, you can completely follow this and it's fine. While the icons might look slightly different in terms of the, you know, the highlighting features and stuff, it's really useful for you to know, though, ahead of time that everything is in the same place. So you don't have to worry about them being different. Now, uh, first thing I want to show you is before we even really get started with the projects, uh, with how to build files and stuff, I want to go over some preferences. And a lot of these things you're not going to really understand why necessarily we're doing them, but it's better that you go ahead and get them squared away in the beginning um, because it's going to make it easier for you later as you're doing your projects. And I always get a lot of questions, you know, maybe two or three weeks into school about, well, how do I do this and how do I do that in Komodo? And I'm going to go ahead and show you some stuff now, so hopefully that you will be able to avoid this, uh, this confusion later. Um, so if I go up here on a Mac to Komodo, and then I go to Preferences, and on Windows, you'll go to Edit, and then go to Preferences. Okay, so you'll go on Windows to the top, Edit, menu item and then go to preferences. First thing I want you to do is click on appearance. By the way, any of these screens that I pause on uh, or that I'm talking about, you can go ahead and click pause if you want and just make sure that all your settings basically match mine if you're not sure about stuff. Um, because I've already made some changes to mine, I there's a possibility I might forget to mention that something isn't a default. So go ahead and take a look at some of my settings and make sure that yours are going to be the same. Uh, this is one place where I just go ahead and leave this checked, uh, but you can take this off. If you get tired of seeing this default startup page every single time you open Komodo, you can deselect this and when you finally cl click OK, it'll remember that setting. Um, <clears throat> Another thing I want you to go ahead and do is go to Code Intelligence. And the thing that's really important on this page is this first checkbox where it says Enable Automatic, Autocomplete, and uh, Call Tip Triggering While You Type. Make sure that's checked. It should be checked by default, but always it's a good thing to have auto completion on, okay? Um, especially when you're a beginner, it's going to help you. All the rest of these things uh, should, I believe, be defaults. So um, if you want to just pause and double check, you can. I'm going to next go to editor, okay, and show line numbers I believe is a default also. So the rest of these things aren't really all that important. However, I do want you to notice something down here is that this scrolls, okay. So on some of these pages, if you can't seem to find something, just realize that this page will scroll if, you're, if your um, screen's not large enough. So I also want to show you down here where it says scrolling. It says use the mini map scroll bar. Okay, well, what is that? You'll see that in a minute. Some people find it really annoying. Um, 
some people really like to have it on really long pages so they can jump back and forth to spots on their page. I'll show you whenever we open up a file and start messing with it what the minimap is, but if you decide you don't like it, this is where you come and change it. Um, indentation, this is where, if this is really important, whenever we get into uh, doing our HTML and CSS, it's really helpful whenever you indent things that are inside of other things. And that way you can see what the hierarchy is. If you want to come and adjust anything about the way your indentation's working, this is where you do it. So you go up under editor into indentation. I like to use the smart indent. I like to auto adjust closing braces, auto indentation guides. And I also like to allow file contents to override tab. Okay. Um, so, and if you wanted to later, you could, as you get used to doing the code editor, you can come down here and you can choose, like for HTML5, for instance, you could tell it, I want to use tabs instead of spaces for indentation. You'll know what that means later. Let's go to smart editing. Now, some of these things are not going to be uh, the defaults. So I want to show you, this is one of those things that drives people crazy. Whenever they first open Komodo, a lot of times, uh, well not a lot of times, when you first open it for the first time, it doesn't do word wrap for some of the uh, for some of the tags. And so like, like if you have a really long paragraph, it'll just keep going on one single long line. If you want that, that to change, there's some things that you need to, to take care of. One is where it says wrap long lines by, you can say character, word. I like to do it by word so it doesn't break them up in characters. And then you can either choose to show a wrap marker or not. You can show that it's the end of the line or the start of the line or both. I just should choose none. Uh, I like to keep track of it just knowing where something ended. Um, wrap indentation. I like to choose one extra level. And you'll see why later it helps keep things indented properly so that it's really easy to see wh which things are inside of other things uh, in terms of nesting. I also like to enable soft characters. Like I said, I don't expect you to know what this means. Uh, pressing tab moves uh, to the right of soft characters. Go ahead and make sure that all of these things are checked. And then down below, I'm going to scroll down. Okay, and you can look at these. Now this is really important too, under where it says folding. It's really nice if you have something that's really long and you need to intentionally fold something, meaning that you need to force it to wrap down to the next line so that it's not, you don't have to scroll sideways forever to see something. You wanna tell your fold mark to use whatever kind of tree you want. A square tree, is it sort of looks like a, almost like a refresh arrow, but it's square, okay? So you can, later you'll see what this does. When you see a square tree, I'll explain it. You'll know what it is. But choose square trees, that's pretty common type. Uh, and then you wanna use horizontal line on folds, okay? Where it says fonts and colors. Uh, I, I'm actually gonna come right back to this, all right? But this is important, we're gonna come right back to this. Um, because this is going to take a little bit longer to explain. Before that, though, I want you to jump down to where it says New Files. And right now, uh, it's probably going to say Text here on yours. Make sure that you choose HTML5. Not HTML, but HTML5, okay? The next thing that you want to check, I want to show you, is where it says Printing. If you want to print your stuff and review it later, print in color if you have a color printer, because it will be so much easier to read now it says always true when printing to file okay that means that it's going to do the same thing for you if you are also printing to a pdf let's say because sometimes you want to save your stuff without having to look at it as html or you can send it to somebody or whatever um, now be aware i haven't actually tested this um, be aware that if you change your default background color from white to black. So instead of having dark text on a light background, if we do it as light text on a dark background, then this might be something to do a small test with so that you don't print a whole page of black with bright colors. I haven't tested it, so I'm not really sure how it would come out. But anyway, the next thing and the last thing that I uh, wanna show you before we talk about uh, fonts and colors is down here where it says web and browser, okay? Um, where right here at the top where it says ask when browser is launched the next time, you can leave this here for right now because um, we're gonna get to something that'll prompt us again later. It'll ask us and then 
you'll be able to decide what browser you really want to use. Um, but it sees the, I have Firefox, Safari, and Google installed on my computer. Um, you could choose one right now if you wanted to, if you always want to open it, let's say in Firefox, you could. But if you leave this here blank right now, it'll prompt you later. So, uh, and then right here where it's preview and browser, we're going to come back to visit this when we're actually doing some demo stuff because changing this will change how you can view what you're working on. Okay. Um, now let's jump back here to fonts and colors. This is by default what your basic page is going to look like. And you can go ahead and you can right here where it says default, you can sort of look at some different options and, you know, decide what you think looks right for you. And I don't care how you set this up. This is purely up to you. So if you like to have color on top of a white background, that's fine. There's also a thing called solarized where, you know, it's not so bright on your eyes. Because I spend a lot of time on a computer, I really like to have dark backgrounds. It's easier on my eyes personally. So that's how I'm going to set mine up. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, and I want to show you where this drop down is, you'll see something that I have, I've made something that says Lee Custom Dark Editor. And mine looks like this. And this is how I'm gonna do a lot of our demos. Uh, if you wanna set yours up like this, that's fine with me. I'll show you what I did. Um, so let's, first of all, let's look back here at uh, the default. It's probably what it starts with. And you can come here and you could, to create your own, Let's say that you wanted to start from something that was, oops, excuse me, you want to start from something that's dark, like maybe dark chalkboard. Maybe that's a good base to start with. Well, you can come here and first of all, you can choose how big you want your font. I find that as I get a little bit older, it's a little harder to read stuff on the screen. So if you don't have the greatest eyesight, then you can do this too. So I just picked like a, a bigger uh, number and it's not going to let me override the default theme that's already there, or it's not going to let me override its dark chalkboard theme. So it's asking me to give it a new scheme name. So here you could type a new name, okay? And I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to work off of my theme that I created. <clears throat> but what that'll do is it'll create a new theme for you, and now you can sit there and customize it all you want. So what I did was I gave it a 16 uh, pixel font, and I chose Lucida sans unicode as mine uh, that's something i believe that is default in most people's computers but basically it's really important i think that you use where it says prefer fixed that means fixed width means that it's a mono space all characters take up the same amount of space when you're doing code it's easier to read code than if you use proportional proportional is where the letter i takes up a different amount of space than say the letter m okay so Mono is typically easier to read, uh, or they refer to it as fixed. Um, I also am choosing anti-alias with smoothing. It's going to depend on the color, because I think it's going to be easier for you guys to read. Also, where it says color picker to use, I can either use the default one that comes with my operating system, or there's this one called John Dyer color picker. If you want to test it, you can see that this is the type of picker. It's like a Photoshop picker, and I prefer that to the Mac one, so I'm not sure you know, what option you're going to get on the Windows one, but this is a decent one. You can also customize different parts, too, of your of your layout. So the original selection background color on this, where this highlighted text is, was a dark red, and I didn't like that. So what I did was I came here and I found selection background color, and I chose a new color. And, you know, I could have, I could have tried, you know, like this or something, but that's a little bit gets a little tricky to read. So I think that I ended up trying that too. That one's okay. So it really just depends on kind of what you're comfortable with. This one stands out pretty pretty well. It's pretty vibrant though, you know, but maybe this is a better one if you don't want something that's sort of screaming at you, if you can stand the color pink. <clears throat> um, anyway, you can come in here and you can customize all of these things. The other thing too that I did that was really important under language specific is I made sure that I told it that this is specific to HTML5, okay? And the reason I did that is because I wanna make sure that it doesn't, all these changes that I'm making aren't like for a text document or something. So make sure that you pick the correct language when you're doing this as well, okay? And uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, and now I've set my preferences and uh, 
uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and on the next one, we're going to get started.